Hello, Nuggets. Okay, so for today's blog, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer. I couldn't think about what to uh, talk about. And then while I was out writing this morning, um, I just started feeling my age. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly. But just, uh, I think I was I was sitting at the cafe and uh, I'd done some good writing. So I was kind of starting to drift and I thought I'll probably be leaving soon. I'm drifting. And there was like these two girls sitting next to me. There was this young guy sitting across from me. And there was another young couple in there. I just looked at them and I thought, God, I'm old enough to be your parents. Your father. It was weird. And it just made me feel my age. So today's blog, I'm going to list the top 10 things that they don't tell you about getting older. And then this is where we have flash screen coming going, top 10. Okay. So I just wanted to list these off because these popped into my mind very quickly, which makes me think that they're true, at least for me, right? Number one, you start to smell. No one told me that. (laughs) No one told me that you start to smell. And it's weird. It's, I'm, I'm meticulously clean, right? I'm extremely clean. But it may not be that you start to smell. Maybe your sense of smell increases or changes or adapts to the point where you start panicking that you're smelling but i can smell myself my clothes everything just so much more vibrantly it's weird i've always had a good sense of smell but um i'm panicked now that i smell i can i'm like my breath smells i brush my teeth and i've got to use a mint and and my clothes, do they smell? And has my body odor bad? And do I have to, like, you just you just start to smell. It's weird. It's disgusting, I know. But no one talks about it. But you do. And we're aware of it. And I think that's why maybe, you know, older women tend to wear a lot more perfume. And uh, men wear cologne. And maybe, I don't know. I don't really know where it is. But I know that you start to smell as you get older. So forewarning, <laughs> it does happen. Doesn't mean that you're dirty just means that maybe your clothes are getting a little bit older you know you haven't cleaned out the wardrobe as much you've lived in the house same house for a long time things are a bit dusty and just I don't know just it it gathers into the end where you realize hey I think I smell (laughs) maybe I need to start doing two showers a day you know so anyway I noticed that okay number two uh, you start complaining about the younger generation I know that's a cliche but you don't think it's going to happen to you until it does I complain about the younger generation all the time. And it's weird, it's changed because I used to complain about millennials, the generation after me. Uh, About 10 years ago, I started complaining about them. Now I think they're great. I actually really love millennials. I think they're really good for the world and I think hopefully they're going to change it for the better. Now I'm complaining about Generation Z or whatever the one is. Is it Generation Z? Whatever the one is after that. Um, You just do it. You can't help it. You, you, You judge their choices. You judge the quality of life that they have. You think they had it easier, even though I had it so easy. You just can't help it. You start judging the younger generations. You judge their clothes, their looks. I mean, I catch myself in thought processes when I see... I mean, this has been going on for 10, 15 years now, so I don't know why I'm thinking about it now. But when I see someone walking past with their pants around their ankles, (laughs) I can listen to me, I sound like an old man. It just is so ridiculous to me. It is so ridiculous to me. All of these questions... Creative questions, I think, pop into my head like, what happens if you have to run? What do you do? You know, what happens if you let out a wet fart and everyone can see the back of your pants? Does that just not happen to these people? Are they absolutely spotlessly clean all the time? What if they got a bit of bum fluff at the top of their crack? Do they not care about that? You know, anyway, so you start complaining about the younger generations. They just they just seem lame to you and, you know, like they're doing it all wrong and they don't understand. Probably a little bit of jealousy as well, I would imagine. Uh, okay, number three. You never feel like you grew up. That doesn't happen. It doesn't kick in. If you're sitting there, as I was for many years, waiting for the point where I feel as mature as I thought older people were when I was young, like when I was in my 20s and I met someone in their 40s, I thought they were mature. They were probably feeling the same as I do now, which is inside your head, you're screaming, I'm still a kid. (laughs) I'm still a kid. You just never grow up. You don't. The difference is you don't have the same, you can't avoid stuff as easily. You have to face it and you just have to deal with that shit. But the process is no different. That's going on in my mind. I'm still, I still feel like a kid approaching this stuff. 
but you have to solve it. So you're just thrown into the fire with whatever it might happen to be, whether it's a health issue, a family issue, an emotional issue, a, a, a personal endeavor, whatever it is. When you're younger, you tend to have a little bit more of a support system or just not think so deeply about it. And older people just seem to deal with that shit. It's not that they're more mature or that they've grown up. It's just that they have to deal with it. They have no choice. They're at an age in their life where they can't run away from it and they can't support, their, they can't have their parents look at it, you know. So you never really grow up. Number four, you don't need to get high, which I couldn't believe when I was in my 20s. I was in my late, in my teens and my 20s, I smoked a lot of pot. I did a lot of drugs, right? So, um, I, and I did everything, nothing too hard, but I did cocaine, I did speed, I did... Uh, pot I did mushrooms ecstasy I did all of that stuff right and as you get older you realize you don't need to get high anymore you just need to get level you actually just really enjoy I do at least the balance you know there are times when I do want to get high it's not that the, it's not that getting high is awful I just don't desire it when I do occasionally still get high it's great yeah I'm high this is awesome I don't pursue it though it's not the pinnacle of the day. The pinnacle of the day, emotionally, on a, on a spiritual balance level, is just that even keel. Where you're happy, you feel the sun on your skin, you know, you feel like you've achieved something that day, all of that stuff. So that really changes, and I never thought it would. I guess, it's, it, obviously, it's going to be different if you're an addict. <laughs> but, but if you're not an addict, if you're a normie, as they called us, um, you stop needing to get high, you know? So... When some, a young kid or someone young says, do you want some pot? And, and, and the older person says, no, I'm good, thanks. They're not being stick in the muds. They're just literally, no, they don't need it. I'm feeling really good. I'm happy. I don't need to be high right now. <laughs> Maybe later, though. All right, number five. Um, making new friends. The idea of making new friends as you get older becomes absolutely fucking exhausting. <laughs> like... It's just like, oh, do I want to do that? If you have to go out and you have to meet people, and you could be going out to meet Jesus, right? Moses, you could be going to a party that has uh, Moses, Muhammad, and Jesus are all going to be there, and they all can't wait to meet you. And you would still be thinking, oh, well, did we say we were going to go? Like, are they expecting us? Because the idea of communicating and going through all of that thing that you go through with new friends, that's so easy when you're younger, you just do it, right? You start talking. But everything's a little bit more important when you get older. You're a bit more aware of things, and I think you're a bit more fussy, maybe. So the idea of going through that to search for new friends and find them is just exhausting. And I dread it, you know? Um, so yeah, that's that. Number six, things start to hurt a little more. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I'm only 49, right? And, and I haven't treated myself well, so this probably has something to do with it. But my wife feels the same way as well. Shit just starts to ache. And again, it's a cliche. But I don't think you really understand it until it happens. And it's the weirdest thing. Like, last night I was lying in bed and my arm was hurting. My right arm was just... My, my forearm right there was just hurting. And I was aware of it. I was trying to meditate myself to sleep because I had problems sleeping. So I was kind of focusing on it, saying, what is this pain? Try and break it down. All this nonsense I go through to try and sleep. Um, and then the thought hit me like, oh, it's just pain in my arm. Yeah, that happens now. Just every so often I'll get pain. My shoulder will just start hurting. What does that mean? Oh, it's just my shoulder hurting. And it's weird the way you just accept that. You're just like, all right, everything's going to hurt a little bit more. You know, I'm going to be able to crack my knuckles every day, every 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to get arthritis. My neck's going to crick. You know, oh, I've got this kind of weird feeling in my ear. What is that? Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, my knees are giving out today. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, I need to stretch. Just that shit just happens all the time. And it's not terrible. It's not debilitating. It's not like you're in constant pain because it's it's insidious. It just slowly get you get more and more tolerant. But every so often, you suddenly become aware of it and you're like, oh, yeah, I ache. <laughs> I just thought about it now. I have a pain right here as I'm talking to you. And you just don't think about it because it happens all the time and it's gone and then the next one will come you know anyway uh number seven injuries last a long time okay so i have a story to tell so last christmas or was it the one before anyway at a christmas we go down to san diego to uh be with laura's uh, with my my mother-in-law and uh, her boyfriend jerry um 
so we spend Christmas down there very often. We spend Christmas Day. So Christmas morning, uh, Vicky, my mother-in-law, likes to make it, and Jerry, they like to make a big breakfast for us. It's wonderful. It's it's a, they're just such loving people, and they want to make a breakfast for us. So it's very relaxed. It's enjoyable, and they work by a ridiculous amount of gifts that that drives us nuts. But they won't hear us. So they keep buying too many gifts. So it's wonderful, right? This morning, with this one of these Christmas mornings, I'm sitting out back and I'm vaping, right? And I lean back on the chair, and it's one of those rocking chairs in their patio, and I just go arse over tit, right? Because I'm just too fat and I can't move anymore, and I think I can, but I can't. And I roll over and I bang my knee, I jam my knee between the side of this rocking, this patio chair, and the concrete. And it doesn't hurt too much, it hurts a little bit. I'm like, oh, fuck, okay, all right, let's go. That bruise on my leg lasted five months, right? You couldn't see it, but I could feel it in the bone. Like, I, after a few months, I'm like, did I shatter a bone and I don't know it? No, I don't think I did. It just, everything just takes a long time to heal. And it's weird. I got a cut on my finger. Is it gone yet? I got a cut on my finger about six weeks ago. Uh, and it's in a bad place. It's right in the, the kind of the, whatever that is, the web. Um like a paper cut kind of thing. Um, But six weeks ago, I think it's just healed. So everything just takes slower to heal. Again, it's probably my diet. If anyone watches this, they're going to be saying, yeah, dude, you're a fat bloke. You you eat shit. Of course it is. But it's got slower. It didn't used to be like this. It's just like, if you hurt yourself now, you're like, ah, here we go. We're on the road to recovery. Anyway, injuries take the last long time. Number eight. Okay. You realize that the decade that seemed lame to you at the time, while you were in it, was actually amazing. And uh, you might have missed a lot of it because of your um, cynicism, right? So for me, it was the 80s. I was a teenager during the 80s, right? Uh, I was 10 in 1980, and I was 20 in 1990, obviously. Um, at the time, I mean, I was living it, I was enjoying it, but then I would say from 1990 to about 2005, I thought the 80s were lame and ridiculous, right? And then you realize they were awesome. <laughs> Not just because I was having a good time, but they were fucking great. They were inventive and colorful and lively, and the music, while synthy and poppy and maybe silly at times, was catchy and memorable. And and now radio stations that play oldies are playing eighties music. That's now oldies music, um, and it was an awesome decade. A lot of problems, right? Obviously, a lot of problems with it. But people talk about the sixties. When I was younger, they used to talk about the sixties, how amazing it was, and I'm like, oh, whatever, you know, I don't know. Maybe they thought the sixties were lame. Maybe at the time, maybe they didn't actually, but I thought the 80s were lame. And then I grew up and realized, no, they were awesome. They were really good. Some fucking fantastic things happened in the 80s. The music was great. I was great. I loved the colors and the the, the brightness and the ridiculous hair. And um, I do miss them a little bit, you know. So not just my youth, I actually miss the 80s. So everything seemed less serious. Maybe it just that again. That's just my coloring of it. But everything seemed kind of less serious. I think kids today, it just seems so intense, man. Social media and judgment and and expectations at such a young age. It just seems exhausting. I don't remember any of that. I was just an idiot for ten years, and it was awesome. Anyway, okay. Number nine. Uh, you start to realize, and I'm not a parent, but you start to realize just how hard the job of your parents was how how difficult a job they had and i think you go through this period when you're a teenager you tend to hate your parents you know unless you're just a great kid uh i did right and then in your 20s you're just off doing your own thing so you really just don't even think about them they're just whatever they're out there in your 30s you get a little bit more um introspective and you start blaming them for shit, right? So you start saying, this is my problem. And then in your 40s, you start to realize, God, that's a fucking hard job. I'm glad I didn't have to do that to me. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't my own parent. And, I, and, and in what, many ways, it might be why I'm not a parent. is because that would have happened in my 30s. And I'm like, I was, I was too busy blaming them for everything. It's only when you hit your 40s, you realize it's not their fault. None of that's their fault. They were great parents. They did everything they could. I was just an asshole kid. Or I was just going through some things, you know? 
I look at my friends now who I think are absolutely fantastic. I know they're fantastic parents. I'm surrounded by people of my generation who are good parents. And I hope that's a sign that our Generation X are good parents. That that's the thing we give to the world is we raise really strong, healthy kids. It seems that way, right? But I bet you those kids in 20 years' time will be going, my parents sucked, man. They were terrible. Look at all this baggage they left me. I don't know, but as you get older, you realize that that was a really hard job parents have. And your ones probably did pretty good. Sorry if you had shitty, abusive parents, but for everyone else, you know. And then the last one is that um, your circle shrinks. I mean, this ties into, uh, what was the one I said before, about making new friends sounding exhausting. But as you get older, your circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And for me, at least, it's fantastic. I love it because it also becomes much more intimate, right? And, and it feels lifelong. It feels like I have a couple of friends um, that you just realize I've had hundreds of friends, right? And it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you're left with these few who you realize, oh, this is a soulmate. This isn't just a friend. This is, this is someone I would give my life for, right? This is someone that I love with all my heart. This is, this is an extremely important loving relationship platonic loving relationship and i think that only happens when your circle shrinks i do know some people of my age whose circles have grown so maybe it's just me but my smaller circle means that i have more love to give to that small group and it also means that all of the problems that i face as being a friend i don't think i'm a very good friend i'm not very su i am supportive but I'm, I'm just i don't communicate that's the problem is that I just shut my door and don't talk to anyone. If someone were to call me and say, I'm on fire, will you come over? I'm in the car right away. I'm, I'm very responsive. I just don't answer the phone. I don't reach out. I'm crappy like that. But those problems that I have as a person are much easier to solve when you have a smaller group. One, because that group is more forgiving. They're already accepting like, yeah, that's just who he is. That's who Adam is, right? You know, you either take that or you don't. And those who don't like it are like, yeah, I, I need someone who's a bit more in my life. So, you know, and that's okay. It's good. Anyway, that's it. I'm glad I got those down because I was feeling my age today and I hope I'll look back on this and I'll either, in 10 years time, I'll either look back on this and if, if YouTube's still a thing and we haven't all been uh, bombed by North Korea, I'll look back on this and I'll go, God, that 40-year-old Adam, what an idiot, 49-year-old Adam. <laughs> he was such a kid. You do grow up. As soon as you hit 50, you suddenly grow up. Anyway. All right, that's it, you little nuggets. Don't feel too old. Seize the day, youngsters.